Are you feeling the calling to start or grow a business that is so aligned with you and everything that makes up who you are? Do you know that there has to be a way to do this without so much hustle and without chasing the latest shiny objects, but you're just not sure how? You can definitely have a dream business that improves, not consumes your life, that allows you to work with soulmate clients while helping you and your family financially and in all ways. You can elevate yourself to be the entrepreneur who has all of her desires. I'm going to show you how on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Hi, welcome back to another episode on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Today, I have one of my former coaches, Nicole Spencer, on with me. And I'm, first of all, I'm so excited to have Nicole on here because, um, she played a big part in my fitness coaching business. Um, I actually signed up to work with Nicole while I was very pregnant with my daughter Ainsley. <laughs> and um, Nicole still continues to be somebody who I, you know, look up to. I follow her content. Um, I continue to engage with her because what she shares is just so aligned with everything that I believe in and everything that I try to do for my clients. So Nicole, welcome to the show. Um, tell us a little bit about you and how you got started in the online world. I know your story, but listeners. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. And, you know, I always appreciate you and your um, just constant support. It means a lot to me. And, uh, and yeah, so I have been uh, coaching and mentoring virtually since about 2014. Um, I actually owned a brick and mortar fitness studio, which I sold in 2015. And about a year before I sold that business, I was recruited by the coaching company I was a client of. They were basically business coaches for gym owners. I started coaching their clients all over the world. I uh, did that for three and a half years and uh, then launched my own company now about five and a half years ago. So yeah, I've been in the virtual space on the business coaching side of things for quite a long time and I wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it definitely, you know, from all your travel photos and cute Mila, um, mm -hmm. you know, you get to, you get to do this from wherever you want. So that's, that's always amazing. Um, so Nicole, you went from, you actually went from being a teacher. So you mm -hmm. like, did a major pivot from being a teacher to then being in the fitness space as a gym owner. And then that led you down the online coaching path. Can you share mm -hmm. with us, like, what has there been like a take, like maybe one or two major takeaways just from like each evolution in your life that you feel has been like really powerful and has kept you in the game. And even like when things get tough and you're like, oh, why am I doing this again? Um, any words of wisdom that you've learned? Yeah, well, it changes the years. Yeah, it changes at different stages of life. I quit teaching in 2007 when I was 25. So, you know, at that point, I think I was at a stage where I just knew from the time I was doing student teaching a couple of years before, I just knew that wasn't going to be my whole career. I had originally thought I was going to go be a professor. Um, I wanted to get a PhD. All I knew was that I needed to change the circumstances I was in. I was completely miserable at the school that I was last teaching at. And they had, for whatever reason, not had me sign a contract that year. Um, I think they just forgot so I left mid-year and I had applied to graduate school and uh, got almost a full scholarship to a graduate school uh, in New Jersey. And I was living and actually currently live in North Carolina. So uh, that was a really good scenario for me. And at 25, I think you're kind of like, you know, you're still so young and you're like, I'll just figure it out. And, um, and so I moved, I went to graduate school. I actually got a master's degree in Holocaust and genocide studies, um, oh, which yes. is a full two years degree. Yeah. A two year degree. And I, um, had still at the beginning thought that I wanted to get a PhD, go be a professor. And then as I did more and I, uh, did a Holocaust tour in Europe and I went to Cambodia and did a independent study on the Cambodian genocide. And I thought, well, you know, my dream would be to work for the United Nations and 
And so, um, and during that time, I met um, the most amazing person ever who is now my ex-husband, but still incredible. Um, and his job ended us taking ended up taking us from New Jersey to New York City. And I thought, oh my gosh, well, here is where the UN is headquartered and I'm going to get a job here and it's going to be amazing. And that didn't happen. So I'm a long story short, I um, got, I ended up getting into personal training and that was um, a little bit scarier, but I knew like our time in New York was temporary. He was a federal agent. And so he, we had to like move every three to five years with his career. And so I just knew that was a really temporary time. And I was still in my late twenties at the time. And then when we ended up moving to this tiny little town in Southeast Georgia, whereas, which is where I ended up opening my fitness studio, um, that I think for me was the first time where I felt like, okay, now I'm getting ready to turn 30. What is happening to my life? If this doesn't work or if I'm not happy doing this, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. And, you know, starting the studio required a lot of expense. Uh, and I just remember like calculating how long it would take me if I had to go back to teaching, you know, to pay off this debt that I was acquiring. And fortunately, it went the exact opposite direction. It was great. And, um, you know, I think if I look back, to those times and to those experiences all the way through everything I've done today, there's really been a huge element of just trust in general. And I think that's trust in myself and trust that I'm like, it's trusting yourself to make those big, powerful decisions, but also just being in trust that I am going to end up where I'm supposed to be. And I've shown that to myself to be true really over and over and over again. So, um, so I would say, you know, if you feel like you're being guided or you, there's something that you want to do, but in your inner voice is telling you that you should, or that it's, uh, going to be amazing, but then your brain starts to get in the way and distract you, I would say really try the best that you can to tune into that inner voice. If that, I don't know if that's uh, super helpful, but <laughs> yeah, well, I think that is definitely yes. helpful because as human beings, our brains always try to get in the way. I mean, it's it's job to keep us safe, right? So a mm -hmm. lot of times it makes it harder to, um, to allow us to take that next step to to try that different thing that could really be a game changer for us in whether it's our personal life or our business life you know it's um sometimes you just have to ignore the brain <laughs> yep, but that's exactly. funny i didn't realize that you um that you actually spent time in new jersey that's actually where i live so that's that's funny. <laughs> uh, I went to grad school at Stockton near Atlantic City. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. <laughs> so your business, Authentic Conversion, like I mentioned before, it really, um, you know, your, your philosophy, I would say, it's about building a business that relies on authentic, ethical strategies and not spamming people. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I love, I think it was a post of yours from, I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago that I read and we were like, you know, I built a seven figure business without spamming people. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Did you like just get sick of people spamming you? Like, how did you, I mean, it's your personality, obviously, too. But mm -hmm. how did you decide to just be like, you know what, I'm going to go like everybody's doing this thing over here. I'm going to go on the I'm going to do this thing like this is what I want to be known for. What drove that desire to really like build your name and build your reputation as somebody who is all about being authentic? Yeah. And I mean, really the whole idea of authentic conversion is about building businesses through relationships, through connection and having your clients step forward and ask how they can work with you versus you having to like go out and hunt for clients and do all of that spammy stuff. And it actually like this idea has always kind of been with me even back in the days that I had my gym. And um, I mentioned I had been a client of this fitness business coaching company that I ended up working for. And it was, you know, it was great. And it was so um, critical for me to work with them in order to really create the success I did in my business. And at the same time, there were like a big part of what they taught was marketing. And a lot of it worked really great for me. But there was a lot of like, this was like 2012, 2013. And I call it like, like punch you in the face marketing. Like that's like what it was really popular 
where it was like 10 page sales letters with like lots of like big and bold and exclamation points and like all of this really like, um, like, like over the top language and all of this stuff that just made you feel like, like, like it would, it would always make me feel like a little bit taken aback. Right. And so there was that like really loud marketing, um, back at that time. And, you know, this was before Facebook ads for small business were even a thing yet. And so, you know, the, the style of marketing, people weren't using social media for business at that time. So the style of marketing, um, was just like, it was one that just never really felt good to me. And, you know, like every time I would like go copy and paste whatever they gave us to like deploy or whatever, it just never hit, um, for me. And I think that would prevent it from like hitting from other people. So that is kind of like what initially sparked it. And then. Um, around the time, I can't even remember the exact timing of it, but around the time that I was launching Authentic Conversion, uh, which I launched initially for gym owners as well. Now our focus is on helping all different types of online coaches, but the initial launch was still for gym owners. And there was a lot of this um, bait and switch going on out in the marketing world, meaning like there were people selling... Like the big thing that was going on was people were selling like like via ads, like free, but not free six week challenges. So like you could, and there was a, there were multiple companies like helping all these gym owners set this up. So they'd run these ad campaigns and they would market this free six week challenge. And you'd have to come in for a consultation and you'd have to put down this big deposit, you know, and you'd only get it back if you hit your goals. And, you know, there was upsell. And I mean, it clearly worked really well, but I just never resonated with that. Um, I never felt like I was going to be the switch someone and be like, Oh, you get this. Um, but then no, you really don't. And so I, it, so it was just like a different variety of what I felt like was that just awful feeling like you're being spammed and punched in the face marketing. And then, you know, over the last couple of years, this like, um, spammy, like DMs, people always hitting you up has become a really big thing. So everything has a little, a, like a cycle, you know, and hopefully that goes away soon. But like, it's, it, it's this spammy selling is not a new thing, it, but it's just always something I've never resonated with. And I think for so many of the clients that we have the opportunity to work with, when they compare the work that they do with us and the strategy that we teach to what they've done or learned within other businesses, they always say, I love how when I follow your methods that people come to me. I never feel like I'm having to go hit people up. And so that's just something that's really important to me. Um, you know, I've been able to build a multiple seven figure business in just a, a handful of years. And I've never done that. I've never gone and hit someone up. Every single person I've ever had a dialogue with has raised their hand or come to me first. So very proud of that. And, uh, you know, I want more of that kind of connection based approach happening yeah. in, in the world. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And I think also as being somebody who's, um, you know, been on both sides, you know, been a, a consumer, been somebody who has, you know, signed up for programs or courses and also somebody who off, you know, offers services. I feel like you get a better person, a better, um, client, or you are the better client when you feel like, you made that decision to work with somebody rather than like, oh my God, that person convinced me, you know, <laughs> or I feel like I was forced to sign up for that. Like that just doesn't feel good. And then you end up getting somebody who's disempowered and who feels like, oh, this person's program or this person's service, that's going to be the thing that takes me, you know, to build my seven figure business. Um, and I can't do it with that. Like I need them to handhold me and I need them to do all this for me. And I feel like it just, it, doesn't usually translate to like the ideal client or the the soulmate client, like you like to call them. Um, right. And um, I think like it's also in this day and age, especially from what I've seen in the past, I would say even like in the past year or even throughout the whole, you know, pandemic, I feel like people have just become much more discerning and people want to, you know, even like the the constant, pain, you know, calling out the pain point thing. Um, I don't love doing that all the time. And I feel like it's different than not talking about, you know, not speaking the truth because sometimes we have to call it like it is and tell people like, look, the, the reason why you're stuck is because you're deciding to, right? But it's not like we're making them feel yucky and gross because they're, you know, struggling with something. So I think there is a, right. a, a difference 
what do you think about that? What do you think about like the type of content that, you know, that really helps people draw in those people that are going to come and raise their hand and be like, Hey, I'm interested in working with you. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really important to show people what's possible to show them that they can get unstuck to, um, to share what the transformation can look like and what life looks like on the other side when people, you know, go through whatever your process is, you know, that is specific to the type of clients that you work with. I, I think all of that's important, but I still think like the nature of, um, you know, the way that I teach people to approach business really allows the client to be more in the the decision making seat versus you know like a lot of people they'll use those really pushy tactics or they'll make people feel kind of like well if you don't do this program and you don't sign up today you know um you're you're never going to be successful and i really like i i walk the line i think really well between presenting what we have uh, as something that is really useful, really powerful, really appealing for the types of clients, you know, who we work with in building online businesses and um, allowing them to be in the seat to decide what's right for them. But also I'm not willing or I'm not unwilling to challenge people and their thoughts processes. So I feel like it's for me, um, it's a really fine balance. I would never want anyone to walk away from a conversation with me being like, oh my gosh, you know, she was so pushy or she wasn't listening to me. Um, you know, I think the truth of coaching is, as you kind of said, you know, there's part of you that has to be willing to be the most honest person, you know, that someone's uh, having a conversation with or in someone's life. And I think the more experience you coach, I mean, I've, I've coached between business and fitness over 3000 people, like people are not that unique. You know what I mean? Like they all have these same like fears and thought patterns and, and stories and things like that, that they tell themselves. And so I'm always, always willing to say, Hey, um, I hear what you're saying and here's what I think is going on. Or I've seen this before and here's what it was. And, and really just challenge people's thought processes because those are the things that are holding them back, right? Like, you know, especially like, for example, when people have really uh, strong money stories around, you know, fear of investing in themselves and things like that. And obviously I'm a business coach and I'm a huge advocate of investing in yourself. I've never not invested in myself. And, you know, I've been able to build, um, you know, before the end of this year, it'll be, you know, a $10 million brand. And I, I think, you know, yeah. So that like that success really leaves clues, right? And we have to remember that. So, you know, it's not just when someone's using that as an example. And of course you can use that. You're a coach, right? So it's like when you're telling some, someone to invest in themselves, it's not that you just want to like take people's money. It's that's really the truth of what people need to solve the problem that we solve for people and to create that success and to put that skin in the game and to really go in and, and get committed. But I also know the stories and, you know, the childhood experiences that lead to that. And I also know that when people, for example, don't invest in themselves, it's most often because they don't believe that the results they desire are available to them. So there's like a lot of, there, I, I really sit on both sides of that. But at the end of the day, anyone who enrolls with us, I want to feel as like I want them to feel as if they've made that decision for themselves. Like they were not bullied into it, that it's an empowered decision, although it's probably both exciting and terrifying at the same time. And uh, yeah, that, I mean, that's kind of at the end of the day, how I, yeah, how I want it to feel for people. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So when I signed up to work with Nicole, um, and your marketing intensive, that's, it's like a, is that a four month program, Nicole? It is now, but I feel like yeah. you signed up. We, we must've done like a sales call. I haven't done sales calls in almost three years, but it was, was it long enough ago to where we did a sales call? We definitely did a sales call. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah, I definitely yeah, did yeah. not feel pushed or yeah. <laughs> like forced <laughs> to sign up with Nicole. I definitely remember that because, uh, I mean, I haven't worked with a lot of coaches, but I definitely remember being on some sales calls where it was like, I literally like almost had to just hang up because they were like, you know, what do you mean? You're not going to sign up. I thought you wanted to, you know, take your business to the next level. And I'm like, um, okay, but this isn't really the way that I want this relationship to start. Um, but with, when I signed up to work with Nicole, like I said, it probably was not the ideal time for me to be working with a new coach. Like I said, I was very pregnant. I think I signed up to work with you. I think it was like May and mm -hmm. I was due in August. So, you know, I was like, okay, 
<laughs> but I was like, I want to do yeah. this. I need to do this. And the things that I learned in your in the marketing intensive are still things that apply to to like now. Mm-hmm. So I feel like sometimes some people say, oh, now it's not the right time or, oh, I don't have the money. Like you, you, you touched on it too. There's always like something else, un- like there's an underlying reason why they don't really want to make the decision to take the next step. But it's like, okay, yeah. well then are you willing to be where you are and how much longer are you willing to be there where you know that you can put yourself in a bit of an uncomfortable situation that it's actually going to motivate you to to do the work and to get yourself out of wherever you are. So yeah, I just want to point out to anybody who's listening and who is like, okay, um, who is this Nicole person? If you've never heard of Nicole, or maybe you have heard of Nicole, but um, you know, you haven't really paid attention to what she's doing because I think you should. But um, yeah, even though Nicole, you focus on people in the fitness, um, the fitness industry, but I know that you also work with people and like life coaches and and people and the the, the well, yeah, yeah, lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So definitely make sure that you check Nicole out. Is there anything uh-huh. that you would like to share with us anywhere that people should go to follow you? I know you have a podcast as well. So well, how are most of your listeners? That might help me. Yeah. So most of the listeners are scaling from six to multi six to seven figure businesses. And usually we have um, business coaches, but also wellness. Um, you know, because I come from that background, I tend to attract other yeah. wellness um, coaches as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would say, you know, I have, uh, yeah, I have a whole podcast that addresses so many of the things that I would share if we had more than just a few more minutes. But I would say, you know, to me, it's like, like I always tell my clients, there are three things that are required to create any level of success. And the first is the strategy and implementation, right? Like, it really is a step-by-step process, especially for those who are building to their first six figures or even like low multiple six figures. It's the process that creates those results. You want to be super, super clear on your marketing and sales strategy, on your offer creation, on your messaging, on your branding, all of those things, right? So there's like a lot of these foundational level pieces. And then, you know, at each incremental level, you know, growing from zero to a half million, half million to a million, and then into multiple millions, you know, there's, there's different things that we need to focus on. So I would say that first thing is always being really clear about working on the strategy that's appropriate for your stage of business. That's the first thing. The second thing is really alignment in your your mind and your energy. And you know, I won't go super far into this, but the, the mindset's so critical. I always tell my clients we can't create from a place of disbelief. So if you want a million dollar business and not every cell in your body is vibrating with yes, this is what I'm doing. Yes, this is available to me. It's going to be really hard to create that and then of course you know the 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 mindset is one side of the coin and the energy is the other so the energy is a combination of your thoughts your belief systems and your emotions and that's really what people receive from you even more than they ever receive your words everything you do and create has an energetic imprint so we want to be conscious and uh and intentional about that and then the third thing required for really any level of success is just the, it's just the time in the game and making sure you're really doing the work and that you're committed. Um, you know, I had someone fill out an application with me earlier, uh, today or yesterday, uh, about working together and they said, I've been doing this for a week and no one has reached out to me. And I wanted to be like, <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be shocking, you know, like, cause, cause really like being willing to put in the time and having the, the grit and the resiliency and the tenacity and the determination is such a huge part of that. So, you know, make sure you've got those three things, the right strategy that you're implementing, the balance. Uh, of alignment between your mind and your energy, and then just really being willing to put the time in. And it doesn't have to take very long and it doesn't have to take forever. Um, but you know, if you don't hit a home run in your first week or even your first month, um, then, you know, you just really always have to check yourself and make sure you're in it for the long game. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Such great advice. Um, so Nicole, yeah. thank you again so much. We will share your, your links, um, and also your, we'll share a link to your Facebook group. Cause I know that you like to hang out in your Facebook group, yeah, um, thank but you. thank you again so much to come, to come uh, for coming over and sharing some time with me on here and, um, with our listeners and, um, I'll see you again soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to the Elevated Fems Movement. 
I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast. So please leave us a review. If you know someone who could benefit from the episodes on the show, please share it with them. We need more women elevating to their highest potential, enjoying all the great things in life, having plenty of time freedom for their children and loved ones, while doing things smarter and not harder and growing a business that improves, not consumes their life. To connect with me and download my free resources, please go to www.juliamhickman.com.